Today, we're diving deep into the DJI Mini 5 Pro. And this isn't just your typical ordinary drone review on an upgrade. No, this is an evolution. DJI just took everything that we thought was impossible on a sub-250 Mini drone and pushed the limits of what drone technology can be in the future for creators, professionals, and hobbyists. And despite everything that they tried to do to keep the Mini 5 Pro out, I got this drone in Mini 5 days. So here we go, everything you need to know about the Mini 5 Pro, revolutionary. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about DJI's brand new Mini 5 Pro. And I'll say this right up front. This is not just an ordinary upgrade. This is a new drone with extraordinary new features. And stick with me on this one because I'm going to break down not just why this drone is different, but why this drone completely changes the game. Now, when DJI releases a new mini series drone, people usually expect a few minor tweaks or a slightly better camera, maybe longer flight time or some polished firmware. But get this, the Mini 5 Pro isn't just about small improvements. It's about redefining what's possible in a sub 250 gram drone. And I believe that the few things that I have to show you are going to prove these points. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that this Mini 5 Pro has a redesigned gimbal guard. It functions not only to protect your gimbal, but also to hold your propellers in place. It's a very cool, innovative design, so you won't have to buy a propeller strap separately. And just so you know, the battery was already installed when I first unboxed this drone. And as of the new feature, if you extend the legs for the propeller blades, the drone will automatically power on. And with the gimbal guard in place, you may burn out the gimbal motors. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you later in the video how to disable this new feature. Now there's something else that's new and not an upgrade and that is the weight of the drone. So if I take this battery, it's a standard battery, not the plus battery, and weigh it, it's going to weigh in at exactly 71 grams. And just to prove that this isn't some David Copperfield magic trick, I'll weigh the other battery also and that weighs in at 71 grams. And you would think that if I insert one of these batteries into the back of this drone and then weigh the drone that I should come up with something that is under 250 grams. Well, let's test this theory. And as you probably already guessed, the actual weight of this sub drone is 253 grams. And that puts you slightly over the 250 gram threshold that the FAA requires that you must register a drone if it is 250 grams or more. So point well taken. This is not an upgrade. This is a brand new drone that needs to be registered. Unlike the Mini 4 Pro, which weighed 249 grams and did not need to be registered. Now, as I mentioned, 
mentioned earlier, this drone will power on automatically when you fold or unfold the propeller arms. This is a new feature, and honestly, I don't think that any other DJI drone has this. You see, if you extend the propeller arm and the drone powers on, the inescapable question is, which arm do you extend first? This is an important question to avoid damaging the drone, so let's extend the front right first. Nothing happened there. You see the drone did not power on. So let's go ahead and extend the front left. And as you can see, there's still no power. So that means we only have two left. How about if we extend the rear left now to see what happens? And as you can see, there is still no power. So that only leaves one leg left where the switch to activate the power on feature is probably located. So if I extend the rear right leg, then I'm assuming more than likely that the drone is going to power on. And there it is. And the reason that I went through this specific order so that you know the correct sequence when it is that you're unfolding these legs, how to automatically power your drone on. Now, if you're not a big fan of this feature, let me show you how to disable it. Touch on the little three dots on the top right corner. That will take you into the menu system of your RC2 remote control. Go to safety in your menu system and then scroll all the way down to power and battery. There you will find unfold arm power on and fold arm power off. You can disable those simply by touching on the little blue buttons and that will disable that feature. And as you can see, as I move the propeller arm on the right rear, that it has absolutely no effect. It won't power on and it won't power off. And there's something else that's new. If you have this feature enabled and you insert the battery, that will also initiate the power on feature. So a word of cautionary advice, make sure that your gimbal guard is not installed when you're inserting your battery. I don't recall any other DJI drone other than my Maverick 4 Pro having this particular feature, but if there is, post a comment and let us know. Now let's go into the details on this new camera gimbal system. The Mini 5 Pro packs a 1 inch 50 megapix CMOS sensor. This is a complete change from the previous version Mini 4 Pro which had a 1 over 1 third inch sensor. And for those of you who don't understand the technology, well I'm giving you a visual representation on screen right now. If this was just a simple upgrade then it would be the same exact sensor with better technology but it's not. It's a completely different sensor. It's because you typically see a 1 inch sensor on a much heavier or lower larger drone and to cram this sensor onto a sub 250 gram mini drone well DJI made a bold move on this one because a larger sensor means that you'll have better low light performance and to elaborate even further low light performance means that you'll have reduced noise in your image and to go deeper into this revolution this sensor will also give you a higher contrast when we're talking about sunsets and clouds and landscapes these types of results are not usually achievable on a sub mini drone. And another significant change will be the ND filters that you now have to clip onto the one inch sensor. This is quite different from the smaller ND filters that you used to have on the Mini 4 Pro. And the only thing that disappointed me just a little was the fact that they didn't include the ND64 filter in the package. But here's what you can expect with the ND128 filter.
Now let's move on to the new propeller system. Now there's something that you all know and there's something that you all do not know. What you know is that the propeller systems are interchangeable, meaning that now you can just twist them on or off. What you don't know is that the pitch angle has changed from the previous model from 3.0 to 2.8. This is the reason why when I tested the Mini 5 Pro that it was much quieter than the Mini 4 Pro. Let me give you a demonstration. As you can see, I am shooting this video with my iPhone a foot and a half away from the Mini 5 Pro and here's what it sounds like. Now I don't have a side by side comparison but the lower pitch angle of 2.8 means that there will be less load on the motor and the drone will run quieter and smoother. And this difference was noticeable when I was doing my initial testing. So basically, this was a complete redesign of the propeller system on the DJI Mini 5 Pro. Now here's something else that's new. The internal storage is now 42 gigabytes, whereas the previous model, the Mini 4 Pro, only had two gigabytes of internal storage. And as you can see, I have an external SD card for 128 gigabytes, but my 42 gigabytes on board, which is faster than my SD card, is my backup plan just in case my SD card fails. On a side note, as a quick observation, I noticed that my SD card was sticking out just a little more than it was on my Mini 4 Pro before and I used to use this trusty little tool to get it out but now I don't need to because I can simply insert the SD card very easily and without this tool it's now very easy for me to insert and remove my SD card from my Mini Pro and you can see as I zoom in how accessible it actually really is. Okay, let's talk about the new, not upgraded, LiDAR sensor at the very front of your DJI Mini 5 Pro. And a lot of you probably don't even know what it is or what it does, am I right? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. And what it does is that it pulses an infrared laser to bounce off of an object and it will measure and compute the distance at the speed of light. And this is the very first time that it's been actively installed on a DJI Mini drone. And the advantage here is that it will work effectively in low light conditions, whereas all the other sensors on your drone are now more sensitive to low light, but not as sensitive as the LiDAR detection. And keep in mind that all of the sensors with GPS will work in collaboration with each other to avoid crashing into an object during low light conditions. Basically, it's like a sonar system on a submarine, but the difference is, is that it's using infrared light. Now let's talk about another new next gen feature and it's called dynamic home point. When the return to home feature is initiated either manually or due to a low battery or a fail safe, the drone will usually return to where the remote controller was at the point of initial takeoff. And if you're moving the remote controller, such as if you're hiking or you're in a boat or you're in a car, the old school way was you had to keep constantly updating your home point location. Well, not anymore because the DJI Mini 5 Pro has dynamic home point. And this means that it will automatically update the location of the remote controller for you. This feature allows the drone to use the current location of where the remote controller is located and the drone knows exactly where to return to home because the new return to home update location will be at the point of where the remote controller is at the current time. There's no longer a need for you to manually update your return to home location because it's done automatically. But here are the two things that you need to do. You need to have the current firmware installed and you also need to enable this feature. So let me show you how to set this up. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to make sure that you have GPS locked on your remote controller. Also, make sure you hear the nice lady say, Perfect. And as soon as you hear that, touch on the three little dots on the top right to get into your menu system. And what you're looking for is update home point. And if you touch on a little arrow just to the right, you'll now be able to access dynamic home point. As you can see, I'm currently set to static home point, but you'll be able to select your controller for dynamic home point. And then that little yellow H will turn into a blue little H. And that will give you the indication that you are currently set to dynamic home point. 
point. You see, a lot of the reviews that you see will tell you that there's dynamic home point, but they won't actually show you how to set it up. Now, let's just stay on the return to home feature just for a moment. And I want to let you know that there is something that's slightly different about the way the drone returns to home on this advanced return to home feature. Because before, when I initiated return to home on the previous model, Mini 4 Pro, the drone used to position itself directly over my head and then descend before landing. But this drone seems to just glide in. Do you see how it just changed? And now it's on a path to sort of glide in at an angle coming down. I've tested this several times and it resembles a bird of prey coming in for the kill. That's the only way I can describe it. And you can see clearly on screen how it just swooped in instead of just descending from an overhead position. Just to give you an impression of how I'm actually feeling, the Mini 5 Pro feels more advanced to me when I'm flying it and it responds better whenever I'm manipulating the remote controller. For those of you who already have the Mini 5 Pro, let me know if you experienced the same thing. Now moving on to Active Track 360. Now this is new with the Mini 5 Pro where it can detect sports scenes such as cycling, skiing, something that was not available on the Mini 4 Pro. And you can see as I'm picking up the pace that it's very smooth and reliable while I'm actively in motion. And obviously I'm doing my very best to try to outmaneuver this drone, but it had no problems at all keeping up with me and tracking well. That is until the very end when I decided to threaten it, but only then did it stop before I could actually make my getaway. Now here's something that you probably won't find in other reviews. How about the close-up shots with details and fine imaging? This is very important, especially if you're doing commercial work because what the clients are looking for are the particulars that uniquely stand out. And this is what's going to make or break your deal. So I'm going to command this Mini 5 Pro to pull in as close as possible so I can view all of the details. And you should already be noticing that the image is sharp, pristine. You can see the details on my hat, the shirt, and the remote control in my hand. And honestly, I don't remember seeing this type of imaging on my DJI Air 3S. And that's probably due to the improved algorithms and AI on this particular drone. So let's see how it picks up the details on a given structure, such as this light pole, for example. And what I'm trying to conduct is an actual inspection at the base of this light pole to see if there are any cracks or anomalies that I may need to be concerned about. And we're just basically role playing here, but you can see how well it picks up the details at the base and also the skin on my hands. Obviously, there is something new and different about this drone, and I'm going to have more details for you as I continue testing further on. But for now, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all on the next video.